Devaya Janmad Asya Yato Nivyad Itaratas Charte Sovigaswara Janmad Yasa Yatam Bayari Taratas Charte Sovigaswara Tene Brahma Hidaya Adika Baye Muyanti Yat Surayaha Tene Brahma Rudaya Adika Baye Mujanti Jasuraya Tejo Vari Madam Yata Bini Mayo Yatra Trisago Mrisha Tejo Vari Madam Yata Bini Mayo Yatra Trisago Mrisha Damna Svena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Di Mahi Damna Svena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Di Mahi O my Lord Sri Krishna Son of Vasudeva O my Lord Sri Krishna Son of Vasudeva O all pervading personality of Godhead O all pervading personality of God. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of all manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond is he him. only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji? Is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji? The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universes. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of material nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction of the three modes of nature. Appear factual, although they are unreal. I appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representations. I meditate world. upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma projita kaito vocha. Dharma projita kaito vocha. Paramo nirmatsaranam satam. Paramo nirmatsaranam satam. Vedyam vastavam atra vastu. Vedyam vastavam atra vastu. Shivadam tapa trayon mulanam. Shivadam tapa trayon mulanam. Shimad bhagavate mahamuni kute. Shimad bhagavate mahamuni kute. Kim vaparer ishwaraha. Kim vaparer ishwaraha. Sadyo hridi avarudyate tra. Sadyo hridi avarudyate tra. Kriti bihi susu sabis takshanat. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth that they are really distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. Such a truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. It's sufficient in itself for God realization. It's sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of the other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpatarur galitam phalam. Nigama kalpatarur galitam phalam. Sukamukad amrita dravya samyutam. Sukamukad amrita dravya samyutam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur ahoraska bhuvi bhavukaha. Muhur ahoraska bhuvi bhavukaha. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desired tree of Vedic literatures. The mature fruit of the desired tree of Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. 
although it nectarian juice was already eligible for including all, liberated souls. Including liberated souls. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Ridyantak Stohi Bhadrani. Ridyantak Stohi Bhadrani. We do not hit Satam. We do not hit Satam. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. To hear about Krishna from Vedic glory. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Or to hear from it directly through Bhagavad Gita. Is it self righteous activity? Is it self righteous activity? And for one who hears about Krishna. And for one who hears about Krishna. Lord Krishna, who is dwelling within everyone's heart. Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's acts heart. Acts as a best wishing friend. Acts as a best wishing and friend. And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. And purifies the devotee who is constantly engaged in hearing Nasta of him. Nastapraesu bhadresu. Nastapraesu bhadresu. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Bhagavati tamas loke. Bhagavati tamas loke. Bhakti bhavati naistiki. Bhakti bhavati naistiki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. In this way, the body naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam, as he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam, and from the devotees, and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the transcendental service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in the transcendental service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Kamaloba dayaschaye. Kamaloba dayaschaye. Chete tarana vidam. Chete tarana vidam. Sitam sattve prasidati. Sitam sattve prasidati. By development of devotional service. By development of devotional service. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the mode of passion and ignorance. And thus material loss and avarice are diminished. And thus material loss and avarice are diminished. Evam prasanna manaso. Evam prasanna manaso. Bhagavad bhakti yogataha. Bhagavad bhakti yogataha. Bhagavad tattva vijyanam. Bhagavad tattva vijyanam. Mukta sangasya jayate. Mukta sangasya jayate. When these impurities are wiped away, when all these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure becomes goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Chidyante sarva samsaya. Chidyante sarva samsaya. Chidyante sarva karmani. Chidyante sarva karmani. Drista evat manishwade. Thus, Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection. Thus, Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of, of samsayam samagram. And enables one to come at once to the stage of samsayam samagram. Understanding of the supreme absolute truth, personality of Godhead. Understanding of the supreme absolute truth, personality of Godhead. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna and from his devotees. In Krishna consciousness. In Krishna consciousness. Can one understand the science of Krishna? Can one understand the science of Krishna? Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 17, Verse number 40. 40. Amuni Panchastanani Amuni Panchastanani Ya Dharma Prabhavakali Ya Dharma Prabhavakali Anuttarena Dantatani Uttarena Dantatani Nyavasatan Nidesakrit Nyavasatan Nidesakrit That's the personality of Kali by the directions of Maharaj Pariksit, the son of Uttara was allowed to live in those five places. Purport by his divine grace. A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Thus the age of Kali began with gold standardization, and therefore falsity, intoxication, animal slaughter, and prostitution are rampant all over the world and the saner section is eager to drive out corruption. The counteracting process is suggested above, and everyone can take advantage of this suggestion. Srila Prabhupada Patita Pavanikije. 
Well, uh, what is that suggestion? That is, uh, even though Prabhupada said the gold standard as well as gold coins is not very good at all. However, he recommended that one way to stop the standard, uh, the uh, uh, corruption based on the gold standard is to use gold coins. And I've explained before, in, in America, previously they used gold coins, but when you go use gold coins, there are no credit cards, there are no uh, loans. You can only buy what you can afford with your gold. Right. If you don't have much, then you're satisfied with what you have. If you have a lot, then you perform a lot of charity. But uh, the cheating based on the gold standardization will stop by using gold coins. Actually, in India before, they didn't even use the gold coins. They used seashells, special type of tiny seashells, and, and other things also uh, that may have been considered uh, uh, legal tender. That means legal uh, money. Uh, but it's not paper money. It's, it's, it was an object that you had to have. So the, uh, the main point is that Kali Yuga is the age of hypocrisy and quarrel, meaning people are cheating and they're arguing that they're not cheating. And the cheating is all pervasive. We had a long discussion about that yesterday. We don't have to go over it again. But there are some points that I want to discuss today a little bit in pursuit of this topic. So the idea that there is cheating, massive cheating going on on all levels, and Prabhupada explains why it's happening. It's because uh, that pride destroys austerity, intoxication destroys mercy, illicit sex destroys cleanliness, and lying propaganda destroys truthfulness. Well, we see it today in many different ways, lying propaganda. It's going on all the time. And uh, we see it in politics, and we see it in the stock market. If you see how many stockbrokers are prosecuted for fraud, you'd be shocked. Every year there's a whole bunch of stock brokers that are prosecuted for fraud. It's, it's called insider trading. And uh, why? Because they're greedy. They're not honest. And it's always hard to determine which one is honest, which one is greedy. They're all greedy. It's just that the level of greediness may differ, that's all. <laughs> but they're all greedy. So, and then you become greedy also by uh, speculating on the stock market or speculating by going to the casino. It's the same thing. There's no difference. We explained that yesterday also. Uh, however, today I wanted to talk about something else. This is another type of cheating that's rampant in uh, Kali Yuga. It's a letter the Prabhupada wrote to a devotee on November 14, 1970. And he says, please accept my blessings. I beg to acknowledge receipt of your letter dated October 29th, 1970, and noted the contents. Regarding taking introduction from some person to their friends for making life members, don't depend on others' introduction. Do your own work. Okay, right away, it starts with an instruction to his devotee. Regarding your feeling of disruption to your preaching program since others have come in, when I was in Los Angeles, you repeatedly asked me to send at least 10 men. Now the men have come and you say something else. You want to have kirtan alone. So which point shall I accept? So it just shows how whimsical the devotees were in the beginning of the movement. Not that that stopped today, but uh, 
you can see here's an example of it. He asks for help, Prabhupada sends the help, and then he says, I don't want the help. You know, I want to chant by myself. You know. Now starts the real core of the, of the subject. Regarding the validity of the Brahminical status as we accept it, because in the present age, there is no observance of the Garbodana ceremony. Even a person born in a Brahmana family is not considered a Brahmana. He is called Dvijabandhu, or unqualified son of a Brahmana. Well, where's this question coming from? Because we talked, I, I gave a long lecture with proof that there was major deviation in, in the early days of ISKCON. There were several of them. I, I only discussed one, and that was what happened in 1970 when people started uh, to be influenced by uh, one or several of Prabhupada's uh, god brothers. And they spread th this poison throughout the whole movement. We don't have to go over it again. We had a whole session about it. But this is one aspect of it that was remaining, that was not resolved. Because as soon as some of his disciples in India started going to other God brothers of Prabhupada and hearing from them, uh, Prabhupada once said, even if you hear one word different than what your guru has said, it can cause havoc. One word different, right? So uh, this is what happened because some of his God brothers, were, God brothers were extremely jealous and envious, not only jealous, but envious of Prabhupada, and they wanted to destroy his movement is gone by uh, giving false ideas to his to his disciples, and then the disciples spread that throughout the movement, and it caused tremendous havoc. And as we explained uh, during that session a couple couple days ago, Prabhupada said, "I've been deeply depressed," and he said, "I'm, I'm deeply." He was deeply depressed for many months trying to root out this uh, massive deviation that was threatening the destruction of ISKCON in its fledgling period. It was just, this was the fourth year that Prabhupada was, was spreading the movement dynamically, and, and then all of a sudden this thing comes up where his disciples are being contaminated by his, by some of his envious god brothers. So one of the contamination was the validity of the Brahminical status as we accept it. Because, now we're going to hear where that comes from. And regarding the validity of the Brahminical status as we accept it, because in the present age there is no observance of the Garbodana ceremony. Even a person born in Brahmana family is not considered a Brahmana. He's called Dvijabandhu or unqualified son of a Brahmana. Under the circumstances, the conclusion is that the unqualified son of a Brahmana, I'm sorry, the conclusion is that the whole population is now Sudra. Now, now many people would object to this, uh, especially many people in the Brahminical uh, class of people in India, uh, and there's a lot of them. <laughs> uh, the caste Goswamis in Bengal, the Sri Vaishnavas in South India, and so forth. You can go all over every different part of India, you'll find Brahmanas, and, they, and most of them would object to this. They'd say, this is nonsense. But it's not. The conclusion is that the whole population is now Sudra, as it is stated, Kalo Sudra Sambhava, in the age of Kali. Everyone is born a Sudra, because the Garbodan Samskara is not performed. Garbhadana samskara is before copulation. There must be a period of purification of the husband and wife. And uh, it's pretty uh, strict. It should be. Because everything depends on the consciousness at the moment of, of conception of the husband and the wife. If their consciousness is full of lust, then... Krishna cho uh, chooses a suitable person that fits that consciousness. And if the consciousness is one of, of, 
of goodness. Then they have a child that's mainly in the mode of goodness, and if the consciousness is transcendental, then they get a uh, transcendental child. So everything depends on the consciousness of the parents at the moment of, of uh, conception. And because the Garbhadhan Samskara is not usually done in, in Kali Yuga, uh, and I've explained previously how uh, in Iskand they tried to start it also. Anyway, um, during my Guru Maharaja's time, Oh, no. And then he says, under the circumstances, the conclusion is that the whole population is now sudra, as it is stated, kalo sudra sambhava. So for sudras, there is no initiation according to the Vedic system. But according to the Pancharatrika system, initi initiation is offered to a person who is inclined to take Krishna consciousness. Now, the Pancharatrika system was started by Narada Muni a long, long time ago and reaffirmed by Srila Rupa Goswami and uh, by Sanatan Goswami in his Hari Bhakti Vilasa uh, book. So what does that mean? We'll, we'll find out now. During my Guru Maharaja's time, even a person was coming from a Brahmana family, he was initiated according to the Pancharatrika system, taking him to be a sudra. But nowadays, little kids, when they're seven or eight years old, at least in Sri Vaishnava tradition, they receive the Brahman thread, Upanayanam ceremony. They don't know what the heck it's all about. Right? And then they're, and then they're supposed to wear that thread the rest of their life. Now some of them get trained, some of them get untrained after the training, and some of them are not trained at all. So yeah, some of the kids are trained and they develop uh, brahminical qualities. Some kids are trained, but then they go to college and they get untrained and the rest of their life they're working in IT or this thing or that thing and they're completely bogus. And some uh, are not trained at all just maybe in the family a little bit, but uh, they're so involved in the, the mother and father, even though they're Vaishnavas, they're so involved in mundane life, the kids don't get any training at all. And they just uh, are Dvijabandhu. Dvijabandhu says, unworthy son of a Brahmana. So, during my Guru Maharaj's time, even a person was coming from a Brahmana family, he was initiated according to the Pancharatrika system, taking him to be a sudra. So the birthright Brahmanism is not applicable at the present moment. So birthright Brahmanism was applicable in previous ages, not in Kali Yuga. That means you can have two sons. If you're a Brahmana, you can have two sons. But one may become a, a Brahmana, and the other may become a uh, rickshaw wala in, uh, in Sri Rangam. <laughs> so, it depends on what their association is and what their training is. So birthright Brahmanism is not applicable at the present moment. The sacred thread inaugurated by my Guru Maharaj according to the Pancharatrika system and Hari Bhakti Vilasa by Srila Sanatan Goswami must continue. It does not matter whether the priestly class accepts it or not. When my Guru Maharaj Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Prabhupada introduced this system. It was protested even by his inner circle of God brothers or friends. Of course, he actually he had actually no God brothers, but there were many disciples of Bhakti Vinod Thakur who were considered as God brothers to Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur who protested against this action of my Guru Maharaj, but he did not care for it. They even tried to kill him. They hired a policeman in his off-duty time to go and murder uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. But the policeman had such respect for Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur that he secretly went to see him and he said, look, I've been paid 25,000 rupees to murder you, but I know that you're a genuine bhakta, so I don't want to do this, so you please go away. You know. Uh, 
don't be here at this time or that time, you know. And uh, so they wanted to murder him. And not necessarily his god brother, god brother, or so-called god brothers, but uh, the caste prominence, because they were also upset by this. Why? Because, now you're going to hear why. Actually, one who takes to chanting Hare Krishna offenselessly immediately becomes situated transcendentally. Notice the word immediately. And therefore, he has no need of being initiated with the sacred thread. But Guru Maharaj introduced this sacred thread because a Vaishnava was being mistaken, mistaken as belonging to the material caste. To accept a Vaishnava in material caste system is hellish. Consider, consideration uh, of Naraki Budi. And that's from a verse that we're going to discuss in a minute. Therefore, to save the general populace from being offended to a Vaishnava, he persistently introduced this sacred thread ceremony, and we must follow his footsteps. Yeah, Prabhupada has to follow his guru's instructions. <clears throat> so Prabhupada says about this, and, and we're going to diverge a little bit. Prabhupada says, Vaishnava has no saffron cloth. Vaishnava is white cloth, because Vaishnava is Paramahansa, above all others. But we do not claim the position of Vaishnava. Prabhupada again. Some of my god brothers, they criticize like that. That I am offering sannyasa to the malachas and yavanas, meaning Americans and Europeans. This is wrong idea. This is not a kibudi. Then in other words, impure intelligence. Actually, a Vaishnava is above this Varnasram Dharma, but we don't claim that we have become perfect Vaishnava. We are not so impudent. We want to remain under the Vaishnava. Under the Vaishnava. I mean, subordinate to the Vaishnava. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, if you'll find the Vaishnava, I'm sorry, in Chaitanya Charitamrita, you'll find the Vaishnava is Paramahansa, swan-like transcendental devotee. Vaishnava has no saffron cloth. Vaishnava is white cloth, because Vaishnava is Paramahansa, above all others. But we don't claim the position of Vaishnava. We want to remain servant of Vaishnava. Therefore, sannyasa order is below the position of Vaishnava. Now, guess who took vice, guess who took sannyas? Lord Chaitanya himself. <laughs> and, and there's no one that even comes close to him of being a devotee. He was the purest of the pure. He's Krishna himself. But yet he accepted the Vaishnava order. Now, what happened over time after the disappearance of Lord Chaitanya? Some of the Apasiddhantas, the false followers of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda uh, started this idea that because the Vaishnava is transcendental to the Varnas and the Ashramas, they don't have to take any initiation because all the, the, uh, especially the Ashrama uh, stages of Brahmachari, Grihastha, Vanaprastha, Sanyas are reformatory stages. That means they're for purification of a person. One time in a GBC meeting, I made a point that uh, sannyas is also a reformatory stage of spiritual life. And my God, uh, several of the GBC men got so angry with me. Say, obviously, they're not reading Prabhupada's books. They really got angry. They said, what, what is he saying? You know, who does he think he is? You know, what do you mean reformatory? You know? <laughs> <laughs> but it is, you see. And uh, uh, so here we see that Lord Chaitanya himself took sannyas. But after him, these deviant so-called sampradayas, and there's 13 of them in Bengal, deviant sampradayas, not bona fide. They were claiming that a Vaishnava is <coughs> transcendental to the modes of material nature, therefore the, they don't have to go through these reformatory uh, uh, ashramas, you know, 
uh, and therefore they were just wearing white, and they're smoking ganja, and they're playing around with women, and doing all kinds of nonsense. So people's opinion of Vaishnavas are very low in Bengal 150 years ago. Uh, and, and in order to change that, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, after his father and his guru had, had left the world, he took a picture of his, his uh, guru, Gorkishwar Babaji, and gave himself sannyas. Now, this created such a uproar that they wanted to kill him, right? Uh, and they said, and, and, and so some of the devotees, like this devotee receiving this letter that I'm reading, they had heard from some of Prabhupada's god brothers, and maybe some others, that uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur was not bona fide. And that he had started something that was nonsense. And taking sannyas in Iskand was uh, part of that nonsense. Okay. So, uh, we continue. Actually, one who takes the chanting Hare Krishna offenselessly immediately becomes situated transcendentally, and therefore he has no need of being initiated with sacred thread. But Guru Maharaj, Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur, introduced this sacred thread because a Vaishnava was being mistaken as belonging to the material caste. To accept a Vaishnava in material caste system is hellish, is a hellish consideration, or naraki buddhi. Therefore, to say, narak, narak means hell, and buddhi means intelligence, so it's hellish intelligence to consider a Vaishnava to be in the material caste. Therefore, to save the general populace from being offender to the Vaishnavas. So what's going on here? People are saying that, that these caste Goswamis, they dress in white, but they're doing nonsense. So they, were, they considered them very low class, and they were low class. So Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, by accepting sannyas, made a statement that the position of Vaishnava is absolutely pure. So there are very few Vaishnavas, real Vaishnavas in this world. But everyone else should consider themselves inferior to the Vaishnava, not to these phony imposters, but to a real Vaishnava. And they should act according to the ashrama rules. And therefore, a sannyasi is not allowed to have any personal contact with a woman. I mean, he can see them in public, but he's not allowed to have any private talks, whether it's by telephone, internet, or in a room alone with the door closed, or anything like that. And one time, there was this uh, young female disciple of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, who was married, and during some darshan, or, or during some association with him, she and her husband were there, and some other people, and they were talking, and she said, oh, Guru Maharaj, I want to be alone with you. I have something very private to tell you. He said, I am a sannyasi. I cannot be alone with any woman. So if you have something to say, say it now in front of everyone. So, <laughs> see, Prabhupada talks about that because that is, that is the rules about sannyas. So anyway, uh, to accept a Vaishnava in material caste system is hellish consideration, not a kibuti. Therefore, to save the general populace from being offender to a Vaishnava, he persistently introduced the sacred thread ceremony, and we must follow his footsteps. Okay, so that explains that part. Now, to continue, because many people, the many of the devotees began in India to get influenced by nonsense theories in India, some from Prabhupada's god brothers, some from jealous and, and angry Casco Swamis, and now from other people also. 
So he says, regarding Dr. Sen's grandson's theory of species, if there are species, the species horse is a kind of species. It draws a cart. The ass is another kind of species. He carries loads. So ass is never engaged for driving, drawing a cart. If brahmanas are a species, and Vaishya and Sudra are other species, why do we see that sometimes a brahmana does a sudra's work? We have got many Negro disciples, and they are worshiping the deity. So why they should not worship the deity? Krishna says he accepts the service even from the Papa Yoni, those who are sinful, those who have taken impious births. Actually, Krishna does not say that caste is determined according to species, but according to the quality of work, the divisions of society are made. Narada says one must be judged according to his qualification, even if he is in a different class or species. Still, he should be accepted according to the qualities which he exhibits, that is, Brahmana, etc. Sridhar Swami says birth is not so much important as, equal, as quality. You, meaning uh, the devotee, have very wrongly remembered something about Sridhar Swami's view. In Srimad Bhagavatam, they said that if one is Vaishnava, immediately he becomes qualified for executing Vedic rites. About this verse, Srila Jiva Goswami remarks, that the brahmana awaits the sacred thread ceremony. But a Vaishnava is qualified to execute the Vedic rites without waiting for the sacred ceremony. So here Prabhupada gives uh, Bhagavad Gita 4.13, what Krishna says, one. What Narada Muni says, two. What Sridhar Swami says, three. Sridhar Swami in the, uh, in the Rudra Sampradaya of, Iska, of uh, Vaishnavism. And then what Srimad Bhagavatam says. So four uh, uh, Shastric references. The real fact is that because of non-observance of the Garbhodana Samskara in this age, there are no real Brahmanas by birth at all. And even they cannot be called as Dvijabandhus properly because there has been no such observance for a long time. They can't even be considered fallen sons of a Brahmana because we're 5,000 years into the age of Kali and almost from the beginning of the age of Kali, the Garbhadhan Samskar was not, not performed anymore. So even the fathers are not real Brahmanas. Kala Sudra Sambhava, the claim of Brahmanism by birthright is a false display of material situation only. In other words, saying that one is a Brahmana by birth in a family of Brahmanas uh, is false. Why? Because when Kali Yuga started, uh, the Brahmanas who had exclusive uh, priority of learning Sanskrit, only the Brahmanas were learning Sanskrit, only their kids were learning Sanskrit, they took advantage of that to trick the rest of the people, the Vaishas, the Chachas, and the Sudras, by changing one word of, of the verse 413, Chatur Vanya Maya Karma So it says, Krishna says that the position of, of someone in the, varnish, in the Ashrama system or Varnashrama system is determined by Guna and Karma, the qualities they, they manifest and the work that they do. So the Brahmanas, because they had exclusivity of the right to learn Sanskrit, changed one word. They went from guna karma to janma karma. And that one word started the false caste system that's been practiced uh, for almost uh, 5,000 years now. And it's created tremendous havoc in the Hindu religion. So just by changing one word, you cause so much trouble, and that trouble is still continuing today in, in Hinduism, just by changing one word. So Prabhupada says, the claim of Brahmanism by birthright is a false display of material situation only. It is our duty, therefore, to train all kinds of men up to the standard of qualified Brahmanas 
initiating them as such by the qualification in accordance with the above authorities, so that they may go on progressively unhindered in their march back to home, back to Godhead. This system introduced by my Guru Maharaj is a chance for all the members of the society, scientifically based and applied, apart from the exploitative sentiment of birthright caste system, to become actually situated on the transcendental platform. The literal meaning of the term Brahmana is one who is Brahma Bhuta or on the Brahma Jnana uh, or, or on the theoretical stage of Brahma Jnana since it is that one progresses from the stage of Brahma Ajnana to the stage uh, of, uh, I'm sorry, Brahma Jnana to the stage, not Brahma Ajnana, it's Brahma Jnana to the stage of knowledge of Paramatma and then to knowledge of Bhagavan. One who has come to the first stage, Brahma Jnana, is automatically a Brahmana, fully qualified as such. So for Vaishnavas, who come to the highest stage of knowing Bhagavan, naturally he's already established his qualification as a Brahmana. Hope this will meet you in good health. Now look how much trouble went, Prabhupada went through to clear up this doubt, or this, no, not, it's not a doubt, this uh, bogus concept of species, of Dr. Sen's grandson's theory of species. See, so at one point, the devotees were not only getting contaminated by Prabhupada's god brothers, they started getting contaminated by uh, Mr. X, Y, and Z on the, on the street. See, that's, that's how powerful misconception is in India. Uh, if you meet a person in India, you'll meet uh, uh, sometimes, uh, if, you, if two people, if two Indians meet each other, they represent sometimes three or four different political parties and uh, hundreds and thousands of different bogus ideas. Right? So uh, the devotees were getting contaminated uh, by uh, God brothers and by others that they thought were, oh, they must know what they're talking about. They're born in India. Okay. So then I wanted to speak about that. Are there any questions? Any questions, uh, Dhananjaya? Okay. So no questions. Thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada Kijay.